So hello world, my name is Amelia and welcome to my little video where I am going to be updating on my progress with getting my CNA. Um, excuse me, well, I'm not only doing this video, now was the best time to do this, but I am also working and getting um, everything organized and my paperwork and all that other fun stuff. So I'm probably gonna be a little distracted. So. Anyways, I believe I updated a video and I really do not like that lighting over my head. It makes my face look weird. Um, I'm gonna try to make this quick. I did a, um, I think I, in my last video, I was talking about how I was going to be going after um, getting my CNA because a friend of mine had recommended I go get my CNA so I can get into um, the medical field, you know, maybe find a new job. It actually, as a CNA, it pays the same, um, it pays the same that, um, I make currently at my current job. If not more, and it gives me upward mobility, it gives me exposure, experience, et cetera, et cetera. And it helps me know if this is actually, if I can definitely cut it. Um, without having to go through like a bunch of education and then being like, oh gosh, I made a mistake, which honestly, I kind of feel like, to be honest, um, I can kind of feel like there's probably a lot of RNs who graduate college and then they go targeting a job and then they're like, oh, can't cut it. Considering that, um, strangely enough, I see a lot of like weird jobs. Like for example, when my partner went and got her ears pierced and, um, Apparently it was an art. I mean, in some states you have to be a registered nurse in order to do your piercing, but it was still kind of funny because it was like, you're a nurse. Um, nurses typically make about 78000 a year. Who's, are they, are they actually, they can't be paying you that much to be piercing ears unless you're just doing this on the side. That's possible. So anyways, um, I'm not sure if I said this much. I am actually... Um, What is this? Sorry, I'm actually trying to get all my class stuff registered together. So, um, so, oh yeah, I have been getting some support through CSL, which is Community Service League. They are supported through HUD. Um, they help people with finding jobs and helping with finances, kind of that kind of deal. And I had already since last year been receiving some financial counseling through them. And uh, after talking to my friend, I mean, making this decision, talking to my friend, I was talking to my financial advisor about it. And she goes, well, we actually offer a CNA training class. And I was like, really? That's interesting. I'm um, interested. So, oh gosh, maybe a couple weeks ago, I went in and I filled out the paperwork. And filling out the paperwork was not that big of a deal. Uh, they had a class coming up in April and another one coming up in July. I had a whole thing um, where I wasn't quite sure um, which one I wanted to do. I decided um, I decided that I was more leaning towards July class because it would allow me to do it would allow me to do my um, uh, it came with two credit hours. Now, unfortunately, it had two days a week versus just one. So that was the downside and a whole bunch of stuff, which I think I might have talked about that in the last video. Well, last week on Friday afternoon, they uh, CSL called me up and said, hey, we had someone drop out of the April class. Would you, because it was, I was told it was full at the, um, initially. And then they were like, well, would you be interested in, you know, going ahead and doing that? So, um, I, uh, I ended up, um, I ended up going, I was thinking about, it. she said, well, you can let us know Monday morning. I gave it some thought. And then finally, um, Monday morning, like at 8.50, I called her and I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to do it. Um, as much as I was a little frustrated, but I have three more weeks of spring semester at MCC and, um, as well as, but then I'm gonna have like a couple breaks, a uh, couple months of break until July when we start the summer semester. And I don't even know what I'm gonna do for the summer semester yet. 
Well, um, she goes and, um, and I said yes, um, but then I had asked her a couple questions about, like, accommodations and, you know, so anyways, but she had some answers, but I want them clarified through the school. So the school I'm going to is Meds, which is a smaller, they are a smaller school. Um, opt out of emails, yes. So I went ahead and, um, um, so I went to the orientation that morning. Some things were answered, some things were not. But it was, I decided to continue. So I asked her a couple questions. I had to go to work that afternoon. I call her up and I was like, hey, is, um, oh, excuse me. I said, um, is, uh, you know, I said, I, I, well, I emailed her. I said, I got some questions, blah, 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 blah. Can you let me know? Well, she apparently just asked our instructor over at meds. Um, yeah, because they do like a limited range of certifications, like um, CNA, CMT, um, and there was like one or two other ones. And um, enhanced experience. Ooh. So um, we ended up. Uh, um, she calls me up that afternoon while I was at work. And I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, all right, yeah, fine, I'll go ahead and talk just because, you know, some of these things are more important. And I sat there and she said, well, because one of the questions I had was about, like, if they can do any accommodations for my ADHD, which usually um, is things like extended test time or alternative formats, those kind of things. Well, it turns out because they're a smaller school, yeah, not, um, not so much as available as far as, um, um, uh, accommodations go. They're like a small little building. Um, she does basically though, I was a little upset cause it was like, well, everyone gets one hour. Uh, basically they can't provide any of these accommodations. She was like, well, basically, uh, you're given one hour to do your tests. Then we have a final test and then we have our state exam. Um, and I can understand what she was saying about how the state exam, um, Right now, it doesn't have a time limit, but because it's ran by the state, they have no control over the rules, um, which, of course, I'm kind of like, that's interesting. Um, so, but then she's like, well, but we do do this thing where every student gets a second try at every test, and you can choose on your second run to get, um, to do it orally instead of, <sighs> basically, I was a little bummed because it was kind of like, she almost made it sound like, I didn't need accommodations when I'm sitting here like I have a pretty major problem and you know I need some considerations you know and it was more so I think that's the kind of thing that's going to contribute to me having testing anxiety we have a total of five tests we have to do throughout um this 12-week course it it finishes up in about July mid-July um and she says that um uh, you get a second one, you can do the oral, um, anyways. So, it was interesting, um, well, I'm trying to gather my thoughts right now, like, I'm not even doing anything on the computer, my, my thoughts are not working right. Um, just double checking the instructions here. But then that's when she tells me, she says, okay, well, you, we put together a packet for you to come get, you need to come get that packet. Um, she says, but we close in 30 minutes, so you're gonna have to come by to tomorrow, which is yesterday. Today was the first day of class. And I was like, oh, really? Um, I was like, nobody said anything. She's like, well, they only let us know about an hour and a half ago. So we had to scramble to put together one. I was like, that's interesting. Um, so, so what, what she said, um, this is like the same paper. So what she said is she was like, well, your um oh had that one upside down so she said you're gonna need to come get that paper and i was like okay i guess i guess i can drive up there to get it and i'm like can i just um so then i was like all right i'll do that um and then i drive up there um the next day i did it yesterday morning and it was like oh, i was in such a rush um i already had a jam-packed day so i had to wake up earlier and do all this other crazy things um so i make it up there 
she comes to the door and of course it was so crazy because their their procedures for covid are like to me seem very insane um you have to like put hand sanitizer on put gloves on and then you have to put on a an issued face mask for the which is an n95 and i can understand requiring an n95 but it was so funny how they're like well you get this face mask and you have to do it for every time you show up <laughs> Of course, I was there yesterday and I was like staring at these five small print signs and I'm like, what am I supposed to? I call them up and they're like, oh, I'll bring the packet right to you. She comes to the door and hands it to me. She then informs me that our first day was in class today. She's like, yeah, you got to come in for the introduction to fill out some paperwork and do some other things. And I was like, uh, mm, as she hands me the envelope and I open it up and there's three sheets of printed paper. I'm like, um, okay. I'm like, couldn't you have emailed this to me? She's like, well, I've been telling them that they should email it. And I'm like, well, why aren't you emailing it? I'm like, I just drove 25 minutes up here, 50 minutes round trip to get three sheets of paper. And then for you to inform me, I need to come back tomorrow. I was like, you could have given this to me tomorrow, right? Oh no, we need this. You need to know it right away. So you, I'm like, just email it. I'm like, and, you know, and I'm telling her, I'm like, I live paycheck to paycheck. I'm like, it would have been nice to save that gas money. Because, I mean, 50 minutes round trip for me in my car, that's it's going to burn. Like, since yesterday morning, I've burned over a quarter of a tank of gas. I mean, that's just the stupidity. And now I have this beautiful little dog here. <laughs> Flip ears. So, um, that was kind of disappointing. But anyways... So I was assigned to come by today at 12 to 2.30 and do our, um, we were doing a reading test. That was our initial thing. All right, go away, go away. I don't need you here right now. Intrusive. And she was like, well, you gotta get 80% or better. I, I think that's what's required on like all of the exams um, and testing. So she goes and, um, she says, you gotta do a reading test, fill out some paperwork. We go over some of the things, make sure that you can get on Zoom. And then in about 15 minutes here, I need to make sure I am present for our first um, Zoom session, which will allow us to um, make sure everything's working and they didn't like make any mistakes on the code. So cool. Well, today in class was interesting. The last time I've had any kind of experience like that, um, I don't know, I don't think I've ever mentioned this. I used to work for AT&T. Which, wait a minute, in my last video, I did mention how I did these testing updates for when I went to AT&T and was doing all that training. So you're kind of getting that same thing here every week and when things, that's what I'm going to update these videos for. So, hey, cool. Um, but anyways, on one of our, when I went to go get that job at AT&T, I had to go to, I was working in downtown. I had to go to downtown Chicago and I had to go take the test at one of their facilities training facility I don't even know what this facility was it was just some building they owned um I went inside and it was kind of the same thing they all sat us in this room and we all did testing oh, gosh I think you had to get in better than 90 percent at that time there was about if I can remember correctly and it's back in the old blog posts I'm sure I could find it there was about 30 to 35 people that showed up for the the employment um, for filling out the test and it was kind of a, a cognitive test to test your reasoning abilities it was it was a pretty wide range test and I believe it it was either 50 yeah it might have been 50 questions because we had one hour to do it um I did the whole thing and I remember at the end of the test it back then um there were six people it was so funny because I thought it was a really hard test you know, you gotta remember, I was homeschooled, so I didn't have much exposure to test, um, classroom testing. Um, and they, like, at the end of it, they were, like, calling these people up, and they were, like, so-and-so, and so-and-so. They called, like, six or eight names. And then I was thinking, oh, my gosh, all the rest of us failed. Those are the people who got the, who got the position, who are going to go forward with the employment opportunity. No, then the instructor says, you are all dismissed. You did not get the required score. I was, like, yeah. Um, I can't remember. I feel like, I feel like they told us what our test scores were. And I think I only got like three wrong or something like that. But anyways, to the point, today felt a lot like that. We had to do an eighth grade level test. 
I was the third person to finish. Um, there's seven people that were there this morning. Um, apparently our group has been split into two groups because of COVID. Usually we would be together. And um, we uh, sat in the room, we did this test. It was interesting. Um, and we, um, meeting ID, okay, that's on my paper. So, um, we sat in the room and um, we did the test and it was 50 questions. There was no time limit on it, as, at least from what I understand. Um, there probably was an hour time limit, they just never told us. And the dog's playing with the bone now. Um, it was not hard, like it was fine, because like the first 10 questions I thought were really hard and I think it was because they were actually like lower grade, they were going from lower to higher, like making it more complex. Because by the time we did the last question, the last question was asking us to basically read a graph and see if we understood it. All the previous, like the first one was real simple. I think by the time the middle one came, it was like a two paragraph story we had to do. It, it was, I was pretty sure it was getting more difficult as you went. Um, so, uh, we went through that and we got done and then she, uh, she goes, okay, she got done. Man, I feel like it was so much anxiety. I'm sitting there like, I was like the third person done, um, five, six, and seven, four, five, six, and seven. They were still doing their tests and I was like, wow, I'm like, at least this makes me feel better. I did take my medication this morning for my ADHD. That definitely helped me focus. That's for sure. And um, she stands up and then she, she calls out two people who were the two very last people to finish the test. And then she says, meet me in the hallway. I was like, okay, I think I know who did not pass. They went out in the hallway with her and within a couple minutes she was like, um, I, I, they went walking, because you can see right to the front door through the classroom through the left. And all of a sudden you heard the door open and close and they basically shot out the door. And I'm pretty sure they were trying to keep themselves from crying. I felt bad for them. I really, I did. But at the same time I was like, okay, well, glad, whole bunch of relief now. That was awesome. Anyways, um, the rest of the class was pretty interesting. I mean, it's gonna be a lot. It's every Wednesday. I have to check in to Zoom from nine to three thirty, and uh, we have like. So here's our. I'll try to get this done in the next three minutes. So <laughs> we have our name tags. Here's our books. Here's those three sheets of paper they handed me yesterday. So. This is our guidebook for getting our CNA. Here's our, our workbook. There's some questions in here, which it doesn't really seem that bad. Like I've, I've known some things about medicine, so I don't think these are really that hard, at least the ones I browsed through um, recently. So let's see here. Um, there's like these questions at the end of each one. So Let's see, defense, withdrawal, mental, coping, suicide, anxiety, hallucinations, depression, PTSD, disillusion. <laughs> Actually, it's a good thing I took psychology class, right? Um, schizophrenia, bipolar, and then there's multi-choice. Oh, yeah, I answer on those. Blank health disorders, effects of person's mind, causing a person to act in unusual ways. Um, blank mechanism, mechanisms are unusual ways of dealing with stress. Um, okay, so like that's gonna probably be one that I, I know through my psychology class. Um, here's, here's an interesting one. Uh, let's see, look at the figure of this person who is holding her body in proper alignment. Draw an imaginary line that indicates the person is in good alignment. Hmm, briefly answer the following question. Uh, you need to help doc oh, Mr. Tompkin. That looks like a woman in the picture. <laughs> out of his wheelchair and into his bed. List two ways you can stabilize the body and maximize your ability to remain balanced. So again, this is gonna be the kind of stuff we're gonna go over. Oh yeah, there's one about oxygen tanks. So general safety things too. Wow, the slices of the person here are actually kind of creepy. 
Anyways, with us coming up on 20 minutes, I'm going to end this here. Um, there wasn't a whole lot other than the fact that we have two um, labs and we have four clinicals. Now, because of COVID, they are doing it all at the school um, in a very isolated environment. We also have to wear a face shield during those sessions, which I think is interesting. And uh, apparently, we're also getting some medical equipment um, assigned to us for the use during the class, like a uh, oxygen and blood and pulse monitors which makes me wonder if we're going to be doing this stuff on our fellow like who are we actually going to be doing our skills on we also gotta do like bed making i don't know it sounds fun i look forward to it but stressful i had to pick eight classes between now and july and they make us do it ahead of time so i'm gonna have to also go to my work and be like oh this is all the unavailability i have now for the next 12 weeks so i hope this was an insightful video um and I'm not going to lose too many of my viewers who are like, oh my gosh, she's going into health and medical stuff now. I'm no longer interested. But anyways, I'm going to leave it now. I got five minutes to jump into this class to say hi to everybody, which she said was only going to be a few minutes. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys. I believe, I don't believe I have anything else until next Wednesday because our first clinicals and labs and tests aren't due until later. Uh, what is it, April? Yeah, I don't, in the beginning of next month because we were not going to do our first lab until we got to do two labs, then all the clinicals, which is interesting. Um, all right. So <laughs> nothing to say right now. You're going to kind of learn about stuff as we go. Plus I'm still doing my MCC, which is interesting. So I'll make another video about this really soon about those things. And now I am just rambling. So I will see you guys all next time. Don't forget to follow me, like this video. Um, let me know if, if you think, you know, it's kind of cool to see how I go through medical nursing school i mean this might be something i'll do i mean it might be weird to have a whole youtube channel dedicated to nursing school but it might also be kind of cool so i will see you guys all in the next video bye now